Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for another this and that and if you're new, these are just weekly vlogs that I do to keep you updated on projects going on, to answer questions from recent videos that may have come out, to let you know of other videos coming out down the road, garden updates, and much more. So let's get to the topics of today, but before I do, I just want to let you know Next Monday, I will not be putting out of this and that video because Thursdays and Fridays are usually one of the two days that I typically will shoot my this and that videos so I can get them edited to publish in time on Monday. But uh, my son's wedding is this weekend. So it is, the wedding's on Friday and the rehearsal and rehearsal dinner is on Thursday. So obviously, I'm going to be a little busy. But after that, I should be getting back onto regular schedule. Now, let me talk a little bit about some garden updates and that's going to play into some other topics that I wanted to cover. So I just went out and harvested some more rosemary, a big basket of sage, as well as the continuing of the nasturtium flowers. I'm going to up my game even more on dehydrating the flowers and getting them put up. So the reason why the sage, the rosemary, even though I have enough of all this for myself, the reason I decided to run out there and just harvest up a bunch more and just keep it going is because the video that published this last week on natural ways to promote hair growth. So this is with for people who have thinning hair. That video is for anyone. It doesn't matter how straight, curly, or what color your hair is. It's about anyone who's having issues with thinning hair, which I went through when we had taken ourselves off the thyroid medication plus i was just going into menopause at that same time so i was my body was kind of dealing with some different things and i lost a lot of hair i'll link to that video down below because i cover a lot of things both internal and external things that you can do well anyway coming back to this uh it's not the first time i've had people over the years approach me on selling my own homemade hair growth promoting oil i just wasn't into selling it. i've never sold it but I thought about it after I got this last comment thinking, well, maybe I should at least give it a try. So that's why I'm dehydrating up even more of the rosemary, sage, and nasturtiums because these are three of the herbs I'm going to be using in this next batch of infused oil I'm going to get going. That will then go into a product I'll be putting up on the store. So um, I also will be using some homegrown nettle. I already have a lot of this dehydrated up. I had learned about the nettle for hair growth by doing the research for that video. Then another lady came in and commented on how, if you remember that old, those old commercials, I remember back in the 80s, I think it was when it was still called uh, the hair club for men, but now it's just called the hair club. And she was reading the ingredients and the two active ingredients are peppermint and sting and nettle so interesting so i'll be using the nettle in that and then of course the red pepper flakes so these i don't grow but all the other herbs i'll be adding in there are ones that i grow myself so all of them are organic either way and then i'm going to be using a blend of oils with the avocado, the castor oil, and the sweet almond oil in that. And then I'm thinking as far as adding an essential oil, I might give people the option of lavender or peppermint oil. Since I'm, even though I grow a lot of peppermint, I need that for ourselves because I we go through a lot of peppermint for tea through the year. So I won't be adding that to this oil, but I can at least put in the peppermint essential oil for those that would be interested in that. So I'll probably give the two options between the lavender and the peppermint. So anyway, it'll be a couple months though before I can get that up on my store. I'm gonna start infusing the oil today, but I gotta let it sit for at least two months. I also got some amber glass four ounce bottles ordered up today. That's what I'll be putting the, the uh, hair oil in to put up on the store. But let's move on to some more garden related things. Now you can see, I did that video, it's another one that uh, published recently, it was on the many uses for zucchini. And just when I think I'm getting caught up on my zucchini, I go out there and find a bunch more and I'm trying to pick them really before they even get this big. But you gotta keep an eye on it, those things grow overnight. I've been dehydrating up a lot, I've been eating it every day for lunch. 
sauteing it up in a little homemade wine and some uh, almond oil has been really good. Anyway, I recommend if you have a lot of zucchini, go check out that video. I put in a whole bunch of ideas. Plus, I got a whole bunch of ideas from other people like I knew I would. And one of those is about the pineapple zucchini. I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. Use the pineapple juice and lemon juice and then you can that. It actually comes out tasting just like pineapple but in that case you do have to skin the zucchini so but what I'm gonna do is I'm not just gonna do some pineapple I'm gonna do some with the black cherry juice the simple truth black cherry juice I actually thought it was organic I just realized I thought all simple truth products were organic but I guess not but at any rate this is really good it has a really good flavor so I thought it would be fun to do some jars with the black cherry and some with pineapple and maybe even another juice that I have back there because I do like mango or something and just see how it turns out even if I just do one jar of each of those other flavors just a way that I can use up the zucchini get it canned up and have it on hand for doing other things because I was reading how some people like to shred the zucchini before they can it up and when you do it that way you use it like crushed pineapple or you chunk it up for doing other things what I was thinking is like a black cherry zucchini having it chunked up and then maybe making like fried cherry pies out of that and I think that would be pretty good now I've made fried dried apple pies using cherry juice to rehydrate the apples in before I put them in the uh, the fried apple pie and that was really good okay and more garden related stuff so my beans have been coming in in fact when I went to edit that video last week's this and that uh, that same day I was working on editing I went out there and realized I had a bunch of my beans that were long past ready to pick and it surprised me I knew I had beans coming on but it just seemed like all of a sudden overnight just like with the zucchini I had a bunch of big ones and I thought I had a lot more time so I've been harvesting my green beans to get ready for canning. So you can see I've got, this jar is mostly full. Here's another jar. I have several more in the refrigerator. And this is what I started doing for canning my beans. I do grow a lot of beans, but as it is, you know, beans kind of, they all come in at different times. And I also do consecutive planting. I will have some that won't come on until later. So I have, I have some plants that don't have any mature beans on them at all yet. My canner will hold... 16 wide mouth pints they'll hold 18 regular mouth pints but i like doing my beans in wide mouth so i don't like running my canner unless it's full so what i do is i found that this works really good especially if you store your beans in the coldest part of your refrigerator you don't have to worry about them going bad you can let them sit in there for seven days and that's usually how long it takes me to get a full canner load to be able to can the beans. So I should be getting there real soon. And anyway, what I do is I pick the beans, go out there every day, pick the beans, cut them up, put them in the jar. I don't add any liquid to it. I just leave it like it is. And then stick them in the refrigerator and with the lid and everything. And then once I get enough to actually uh, fill up the canner, then what I do is I pull them out early in the day give the jars time to come to room temperature and then i add in a little bit of salt so maybe about a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon per pint size jar like this and then top it off with my room temperature rainwater and then how i do it, a lot of people will put hot ingredients into their canner but what i always do is if it's room temperature i'll put them straight into the canner with the water and then let it all heat up together i've never had any issues with jars sealing or breaking by doing it that way but you can do it however you want some people prefer to heat the water up with the salt and then pour it over their beans or whatever it is they're canning that's just the way i do it it's simple and one more garden related thing that's been happening as of recently as my sunflowers have been opening up still no dark red ones opening up yet i'm wondering if i'm ever going to get any flowers on those but my lemon queen which always do good for me are opening up but the one that surprised me was the orange ones have all been opening up a lot sooner than the lemon queen the orange ones are uh autumn beauty is what they're called so i at least know for sure that i'll have the autumn beauty seeds to add to my store along with the lemon queen sunflowers hopefully the velvet queen which is the dark red burgundy flowers 
will be opening up this year. I'm really excited about them. Those are the ones I've been most excited about, but we'll see. All right, and then one more thing I wanted to cover, which is actually still garden related, but you might have seen the video review I did on the hose link, which is probably about two weeks old, at least by the time you're seeing it. Still loving it, but I wanna share something. I actually do have two of those because the first one they sent me, though it worked fine as far as uh, pulling the hose out and using it, the hose never locked into place. And I told them, while I like all the features on this, and the hose is not locking into place, and so I have to hold it, and it's really kind of a hassle to do that. So they said, okay, no problem, we'll go ahead and send you out a new one, which they did right away. They sent me a new one, and then no problems with that locking into place. But one of my concerns I had, without knowing what the actual issue was with that first one, is that... I didn't know if it was a weak point in the hose link that did something break in there. Is that why it's not working? Instead of hauling the other one out to the dump, Patrick decided to take it apart and look at it and see if it was something he could repair. Well, it wasn't actually broken. There's the pegs that actually lock into the channel. So when you're pulling the hose out, that locks into a couple of different channels. So there's two different channels it can lock into. What happened was when they put it together, they didn't get that peg lined up into the right place. So it was uh, it was outside of where that chan those different channels are, which is why it wouldn't lock into place. And so Patrick was able to get it properly lined up and put it back together. So now I do actually have two. So I have one for back here and one out front and it's perfect. I can actually reach all of my backyard garden with the one from back here and the whole West Herb Garden over here. And then the one out front, I can get everything else. So it's perfect. And I'm still very, very happy with it. Now, I do not have an affiliate link, but they were kind enough because I asked. They were kind enough to give me a coupon code that you can use to save $10 on your order. That's at least something. So if you're interested, I'll go ahead and put the link to their store and then I'll put that coupon code next to the link so you'll know what to put in there. But I wanted to share something else because some people were like, wow, it's kind of expensive. Well, don't go to Amazon to buy it. Amazon is more than twice as much to buy it from there than to buy it directly from the company. Now I could give you the link at Amazon and then I can make a commission off of that, but I'm not gonna do that because I checked it out there, way too expensive. And then the other thing I wanted to say is some people even looking at the price at the store at their own website thought it was a little spendy. And I do understand that might be a little expensive for some people, but I wanna explain something else is that we have a really nice setup for our rainwater that we put together ourselves. I used to say Patrick did. We bought the hoses separately. We bought the reel separately. We bought the different parts and pieces to get it set up. And I would say we've spent at least that same amount of money on that setup as it costs to buy the hose link itself all already set up. But the, uh, our other setup isn't retractable. I have to hand crank it, which is fine. It, I can do that quickly and I don't mind it at all. In fact, I still love that setup. But, and then I don't have some of those other cool features that the hose link came with itself. So really, if you're wanting a good setup, uh, you can either piece it together yourself and maybe not still not get all the great features that the hose link has and end up spending just as much money or you can buy one that's already uh, put together itself. One thing I did do is I did finally order up the cover uh, for at least to go over the one out front because that's the one you know you see from the street and I want it to look a little nicer and blend in with our house. So I got that printed cover with the greens on it. So it should look really good uh, next to the house. So I can't wait to get that and put that on there. That's just a protective layer. I considered making one to go on there, but then when I looked at the price and considered the fabric, and what it's made out of, the zipper, the Velcro, and all this stuff, I figured it, I decided it was worth it to go ahead and buy that. My son, by the way, came over the other day to wash his car and used the one back here, and he really liked that setup. So it's good for whatever you need it for. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed my this and that video. And remember next week, even though I'll have a video publishing on Monday, I'm skipping the this and that for next week, and I'll be back to my regular schedule the next week. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.